Hi there, I'm Mary Susie from Bead Me a Story, and today I'm going to show you some additional jewelry techniques um, for those of you who have purchased this Epstein chain project. This is a kit and it comes with a video and uh, that video will show you how to make this chain. But once you've made that beautiful chain, um, I thought I'd add some additional techniques to show you how to um, add some art beads. Uh, this is from uh, Green Girl Studio, and you'll see there's another piece on here that's also from Green Girl Studio. And I've added some extra flourishes, some gemstone chips, and things like that to this project. And I wanted to show you how to do that because, uh, you know, it just adds extra fun um, when, you, uh, when you learn beautiful techniques um, to add some different textures and some mixed media to the mix. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to do these uh, gemstone chips and put them on a strand. Um, I'm going to use bead wire. This is uh, flex rate 49. So the 49 um, is a little bit more expensive than what you might find, um, you know, in, in a more reasonable price and in a little bit skinnier size but it, it's also very fluid and that's what I like about it. And it's a little bit stronger too. So if you're using gemstones, you know, which can have uh, some sharp edges and things and can cut string easily, uh, this is preferable. And uh, just, just for the weight that they have, because they have a lot of weight. And since I'm using this with chain mail, that's very lightweight, I like having this fluidity too, because it's gonna move a little bit better than some of the, uh, stiffer ones like um like you know a seven or 19 will okay so the first thing i want to show you is how to do a crimp so actually i'm just going to start with this on the spool and i'm using a small crimp so i'm hoping you can see all of this today the reason i wanted to use a small was because uh, we're going to use a crimp cover with this Okay, now this is my Wire Guardian. And these are great because as uh, I'm going to hook this into chain and it's going to be connected with jump rings, you can see that the area that would normally have something rubbing against it is not going to in this case. This is really tiny stuff. So just bear with me a minute. Oh. There we go. I just had to get a little bit more straight on my crimp bead. Okay, so we don't need much wire at the end because I'm gonna cut all of this off that goes beyond the crimp bead. Okay, and I wanted to talk to you today about a couple things that I never really see being discussed. So, first off, okay, so what I want to make sure of is that when I go to crimp the bead, so I want to make sure that, let's see, if I pull on this, okay, this belongs to the tail. So see how the, these are crossing like an X? We don't want it to cross like that. We wanna keep this over on this side, okay? And that's really critical to getting a good crimp is that you have the two sides separated um, so that when you crimp down, so you're gonna create a little dent in the center of your crimp bead um, so when you crimp down, you don't want those crossing because then it's just mashing it. And I think a lot of people get confused by that. But if you separate the strands, okay, and make sure that this that's coming on this side is over, over on the right and this side is the left, then when you go to crimp it, you're actually separating the two strands, which is what you want to do. Okay, now the next thing. When you look at a pair of crimp pliers, now this, this pair can do um, three sizes, I believe. 
And when you go to crimp it, what you're trying to do is actually, can you see the little tooth on here? That's the part you're trying to use, okay? So you're trying to actually take that tooth and you want to let it dig into the center between the two strands of crimp beads, okay? So I'm gonna do it now. Now when you do this, I just want you to notice, you wanna try and be at a 90 degree angle from the crimp, because if you're um, slightly off or your stuff is slightly sideways, that can cause it to go wrong too, okay? So I am going to, Okay, and hopefully you can see how those little wires separated a little bit in there. Okay, and that's my crimp. So now when I go to squeeze it, now I have a much better chance of it folding over. So it's going to kind of fold in half on itself. And that's the motion we want to have happen. So let me squeeze this. Oh, and that worked beautifully. Okay. So see how it kind of mashed up on itself now. Okay, so that's that's the right way to crimp. I find that people don't show you that, like what you're trying to achieve with the tooth and what you're trying to achieve um, as far as when you, uh, you know, go ahead in with the teeth and try and split it in half. So a lot of times your wire is gonna crisscross itself and you can see where now if we mash down on that, we're just damaging the wire, we're not, um, helping ourselves at all. Okay, so I am going to, I have kind of tugged on this in every way, shape, and form just to make sure it's tight. And then I, I find that a basic pair of nail clippers is really the best thing to cut bead wire with. I might leave just a, a little hair on there, but that should be very secure. Now, if you really want to, um, when we go to put our crimp cap on here, you could always put a little piece of, uh, a little tiny bit of glue. Um, I would use something that's first of all clear and secondly flexible, okay? Because you don't want anything um, interfering with the flexibility of this wire. If you use something that's gonna be become real hard like a super glue, then it could make this uh, section brittle and break off over time, okay? So that's it for our in-depth crimp part. And now I'm going to cut this off. Let's see, I had a little piece here. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this and to measure and because I, I'm working these pieces into my necklace and I want them all about the same size. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go a little bit past this. So I've got a little bit of extra wire on the end to overlap with and um, put another crimp on the other side. Now the other side will be harder, but now that you've seen how to really do this properly, I think you'll be much more successful. Okay, so I'm gonna put gemstone beads on here. And this is another technique that I wanted to show you. Um, I'm gonna separate these with jump rings. And jump rings are always really interesting to separate gemstones, because of course the gemstones are not even. So these are gonna lay in all sorts of different, you can see that they lay at all sorts of different angles on the piece. And the other thing about this is I can do little singles and you see I've closed my jump rings perfectly. If you do not have a perfect closure, this could easily slide off this bead wire because this wire can find its way out. That's another reason I use the 49, it's a little bit thicker. Okay, so now that we have a perfect crimp on here and we are ready to string beads onto our wire, um, I'll show you, I'm just gonna do some gemstones on here. These are amethyst chips, okay? And we want it to look like this. So I just wanna show you what I did with the jump rings. So most of the jump rings are just simply closed, okay? So we wanna get a perfect closure on our jump ring. So we grab it at three o'clock on the right, and we're gonna grab it at nine o'clock on the left. And instead of just coming back towards it, we're gonna actually try and overshoot as we close this ring so that we can get a perfect seamless closure on this. Okay, so see how I overlap this just a little bit? 
so they're they're crossing over each other just a tiny bit there and then when I bring it back I have a perfect closure you can't even really see where that is okay so that's one technique and then I want to show you another so when I pour the jump rings out of the bag a lot of times I'll have ones linked together so I just key in on the ones that have uh, two jump rings linked together and I make these little uh, little roses or Mobius rings is another name for them Okay, and it's just really two rings linked together. And then it's it's how you put them on. So you can see if I just let them overlap, they make kind of like a little, the start of a little rose. Okay, and when we pass the wire through, we're gonna pass it through the middle. And that gives us a little texture on the sides. Okay, so that is how you do that. So you can see that I'm just gonna start stringing here and Let's see. Well, let's go ahead and use one of our little roses first. Why not? Okay. And I will mention that it always takes a little longer to do gemstone chips because it's really hard to see the um, holes in these. Oops. Okay, so I put one on and then I'm going to go to... my mat. I'm going to put another one on. And then I'm going to do a mat purple. So I'm just changing up the colors with each row. I try and choose the chunkier ones. Try not to choose ones where you're, um, where they're so small that the jump ring might, um, fit over top of it. You can see that one might be too tiny. These will be just fine. Okay, and I'm going to grab another one of my little knots here. Okay, so this is just random. So as we build this up, I'm going to keep going off camera. So I'm going to pause here and I'm just going to keep going till I reach the end. And then I'll show you how to, uh, how to finish the end with the crimp bead, a wire guardian, and then put on my bead caps. Okay, so as you can see, I've finished the length of this, and now we're just gonna finish this piece up. And I am going to do that by placing on a crimp bead. I'm gonna grab my wire guardian. And then I'm going to bring it back down into my wire guardian. And I'm going to pass through the crimp bead. Okay, so when I do this one, again, I want to be paying attention to which side I am pulling on. Okay, so you can see that this should be over here on my left where I'm pulling. Okay, and there's a little room here, okay? And we actually wanna have a little room here. And the reason why we use um, the uh, crimp caps is to fill in that room later. Okay, so again, let's remember, I'm, I'm kind of holding this end piece over on the left so that this other side, which was my right hand side, stays over on the right. And I wanna come in and I wanna use um, these little ridges to split this crimp bead in half. This takes a little bit more doing because, of course, we got the beads moving underneath us and doing all sorts of things. Okay. That's pretty good. And you can see the little dent in between the two wires. Okay. 
and then I'm I'm in the um, I'm in the groove part, the more rounded area now when I try and squeeze these, uh, squeeze the crimp bead together. Okay. Once I get it squeezed all the way too, I can use the tips of my pliers to really squeeze it tight. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in here. I, I know that that was very secure, so I'm gonna cut this off. As close to the crimp as possible to hide it. And then I'm gonna come in with my crimp covers. Now again, I'm using small, so these are a little hard to handle. They're, it, it doesn't seem like it'd be that hard because these aren't all that tiny, but remember you have to get it around your crimp. So I did find that a challenge. I'm using uh, um, Zuron pliers here. These are my crimping pliers. I love them because they work with three sizes so I can kind of decide where I want to use it. Um, and then it, they are very, um, they have a bit of friction to them. They're very slip resistant pliers. So when I pick things up, I'm not marring them, but it's able to hold on to some slippery things that maybe I couldn't with other pliers. Okay, so see how I just fitted that around the crimp? Okay, just around the outside. And then I'm gonna squeeze. And now it just looks like a little bead on the end there. And then I'm gonna take my other side Okay, I'm going to fit it around that crimp. And again, you want to make sure you're not at an angle, that you're um, perpendicular to the wire and the, and the crimp. Okay, and then just squeeze that. And again, just looks like there's a little bead on the end there. Okay, so that's all there is to uh, using um, bead wire and um, crimp beads, and wire guardians, and bead caps. Okay, so in this next part, um, I wanna show you how to add a little bit of extra to our mermaid. Sorry about that, hit the camera. Um, so we're gonna add some little oceany waves. Uh, she's got a little hole in her tail. And by the way, uh, this mermaid is from uh, Green Girl Studios, and she makes the most beautiful pewter pieces you've ever seen, and so whimsical. And there's also another piece on here, which is this beautiful branch. Okay, but right now we're going to add some oceany effects to the um, mermaid tail. And we'll probably add it throughout the chain too, so uh, let's... Uh, take a look at the materials we're going to use. First of all, um, we've got berry beads, Mayuki berry beads, and these work really well for creating like ruffly effects. And I've got several colors going here. And then I have several colors of um, jump rings. Okay. And I used mostly 20 gauge, 532nd inch jump rings to do this. And you can see I've already mounted a bunch of my jump rings with the berry beads. Um, but I didn't have rose gold. It doesn't come in the size, this same size that I needed, the 20 gauge 532nd. So I decided to use the, like just the pearls on those. And that'll give this a really refined finish um, with, you know, kind of the precious metal and the, and the pearls together. Okay, which are this color of berry bead. Okay, and then I've I've used some um, union beads that I have had left over. I don't think I have any of these left for sale, but um, these union beads are like a matte turquoise vitrail, and they were absolutely beautiful. So they give me a nice oceany effect that helps me pick up the um, turquoise color, the sky blue kind of color in my pieces. So I've kind of mimicked the same colors that I used in the chain and brought in jump rings that are just a little bit smaller size to help me do this part. So let me go ahead and let's see, I'm gonna do this one. This one I, I mounted two beads, I just lost one. So let's, let's use uh, one of our beads 
and it doesn't doesn't have a whole lot on it. You can see I just put two beads on it and let's pass through the little hole at the bottom. Now I'm going to add more jump rings to this jump ring. Okay, and I'm going to keep keep adding more stuff on. Okay, so I was getting a little bit off camera there. Um, so I went ahead a little bit. And I, I just really want you to see that we just keep adding and adding and adding to this until we just feel like it's as, as fluffy and wavy and foamy as we want this to look. Okay, so I'll give you a little close-up shot of this. Okay, see how that's just, it's just jump rings with berry beads on it. But it gives this wonderful little wavy effect at the bottom. Now, since we've done that, I want to show you that on the chain, I've got a few really weird transition points, okay? So the part of the chain where you've got your uh, wire guardians and the chain linking together, this is a great section to add some of these flourishes and things. Okay, so I'm gonna take some more berry beads Let's put one of, one of our pearls on. Union bead. Okay, and we'll start linking these into these little transition points. Okay, and then see all of a sudden we have a little bit more interest in that area uh, that we can use to kind of cover up some of our uglier pieces, you know, like the wire guardian and stuff like that. You won't even see it. It's really kind of fine the way it was, but this is this is the these are the type of additions that really um, turn your pieces into a work of art and really make you stand out from um, you know just a simple chain design to you know something that's truly interesting all the way around and you can see the care that was put into the piece of work. It's the those finishing touches that really make all the difference in the world. And so I'm also gonna do some down here on this top jump ring, okay? And, uh, you know, we'll transition this whole little section and it'll be a little, little frothy area. And then we can do that over here at the tops and bottom of our branch. Okay, I love these branches. I'll just, I wanna show you a, a close up Green Girl Studio. She just, her work is just absolutely wonderful. Look at the little little barnacles or little buds that are on here. So you could use this, you know, as a nature, but this, this is like a wonderful little piece of driftwood too, because you can see all the little details that she adds to her work, even on the back. Okay, so we'll add some um, frothy points here and here, and I'll probably do one at the top of where the gemstones meet up to the necklace, and then we should be finished. Okay, so this mermaid chain is complete, so I just wanted to show you some close-ups of how everything worked out. You can see all of our section here that we added. I also added some of the berry beads 
uh, just above the mermaid and I added a few in this bottom section of my Epstein chain. Okay, and then you can see that as we have our branch here, we've got some sections up here and in all our transition points. But just wanted to give you a really good shot of how this finished up and uh, tell you to be sure to uh, like and follow us on YouTube. And you can find this Abstain Chain Kit at beadmeastory.com. You can also purchase uh, most of the supplies there too. Uh, all the jump rings are available there. Of course, please visit greengirlstudios.com to get purchase a mermaid or the branch that you saw. But uh, all the rest of it should be available from Bean Me A Story. So, hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.